Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein, quick hitter edition. Um, we're going to go out to Philadelphia and New York and talk about some new, appears to be new protocol by the FBI in cutting deals with mob informants. Uh, this past week, a uh, shout out to George Anastasia and Dave Schretweiser out in Philadelphia um, in their Mob Talk sit down podcast. They uh, broke the news that Anthony Persiano, who is the most recent Philly uh, mob soldier to turn government informant uh, wired up on the whole Merlino crew in the 2010s, uh, recorded a making ceremony in 2015. It appears that he has not been sentenced yet. Uh, the case dropped three years ago. I think he flipped you know, more than 10 years ago. And uh, he, he has yet to be sentenced living somewhere in hiding right now. And it, and it looks like this is, again, a pattern. We saw recently in New York City, um, Joe Massino's a longtime driver and uh, messenger, Goldie Leischenheimer, was sentenced last month, uh, 20 years after he cut his deal. It just came out from that sentencing, shout out to Jerry Capace at Gangland News, who pointed out that Joey the Mook, D'Amico, uh, who was a longtime soldier and acting capo in the Bonanno crime family, cut a deal in 2003 or 2004. He's yet to be sentenced. He's been out 20 years um, waiting to be sentenced. And so who knows when Anthony Persiano will eventually be sentenced. Could be another year from now. I guess it could be another 10 or 15 years from now. Um, not exactly sure you know, how this benefits the, the federal government, I guess I'm it's crystallizing maybe in real time in my head that you can delay the sentencing and that in that sense, delay the punishment, maybe tamp down the uh, anger and bitterness and resentment from the public or the group that, that, that these people have turned against. And by the time they're sentenced and it hits the paper that they're not doing any uh, real time that, you know, the, the temperature has, has lowered on the situation. Um, it used to be, you know, these guys would cut the deals, at, do whether it be two years, five years, 10 years, and then walk into witness protection, but they were being sentenced um, pretty quickly or, relatively quickly after they um, decided to, to flip and join Team USA. Now it looks like kind of the new play is to, you know, let it linger. So, you know, when we're talking about D'Amico, you know, you know, he came from a mob family. His uncle was uh, Al Walker, uh, was running around with a lot of those zips. Seen that picture, uh, Cesare Bonaventure, uh, you know, the famous zip that turned on uh Carmine Galante and then became a capo youngest capo in New York I think he was 25 26 he eventually was killed in 84 but uh when you're talking about Philadelphia Persiano is a guy that you know got made twice he got made in the Lucchese family and then uh you know transferred and was made in Philadelphia he wired up where is that wire we're sitting here again it's almost 10 years since he recorded that making ceremony and we haven't seen a transcript. We haven't seen uh, really any. We've seen bits and pieces come out in uh, indictments and in, in court cases, but we've yet to see the whole thing. And how is this being weaponized behind the scene right now? Because I would bet <laughs> my last dollar that that's going to wind that transcript. Persiano himself on the stand talking about the transcript, talking about him being wired up uh, is going to come out in future indictments, future court cases. So maybe that's playing a role in, in him not being sentenced yet, but has not been sentenced. People are kind of wondering what's going on in Philadelphia. But again, just to give it context, if we look at what's happened in the Bananos in New York City with Goldie and Joey the Mook, this is the new way of doing things for the feds. You might be out for two decades before you're sentenced. Something to keep an eye on. OG Pod, Scott Bernstein out.